This week I want to share with you two reasons why street people tend to drink on the main streets that run through a neighborhood rather than in the back alleys so much. And more importantly, I want to give you the reason why this is important to you. Hi, I'm Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, Premium Private Investigator Training, from someone who's been there and done that. And depending on where you work or do surveillance, serve process, maybe even live, there are neighborhoods that have a, a fairly high number of street people and you'll see them tending to sit on stoops and drink kind of more out on the main drags rather than back in the alleys. Now you may be able to think of exceptions when you're walking down the street, you kind of look down a side street or an alley and you see a group of people sitting back there drinking. Um, and in those circumstances, uh, you know, it's probably more of a regular spot and there's this sort of safety and numbers thing. But that brings me to why you tend to see uh, street people drink on those main drags. Number one reason of the two reasons is that it's just safer for them to drink right there along the main street, the, the main uh, roads that go through these neighborhoods. Uh, you know, for these people who are you may look at them and, and think of them as perpetrators, uh, but they are much more likely to be victims than perpetrators. Now, make no mistake, there are, they will hustle you if they get a chance, for the most part. I'm talking in generalities here. Um, it can be dangerous uh, to deal with some of them if they're uh, off their meds, if they are drunk at that particular moment, if they're high. Literally, you know, if somebody burns a hole in their tent, you know, those types of things. You, you catch these people, like with anybody, you catch them at the wrong time, it could turn ugly for you. But they stay out on those main drags because it's safer for them. If they drink and pass out or they just become so stupefied back in an alley, uh, they will wake up or come to without their shoes, without, you know, what little possessions they have on them. They just simply will be robbed back there. You hear about circumstances where people are, are killed over a beer. And this is one of those things where a guy can come out of a out of a quick mart or something uh, with you know a beer and a pack of cigarettes, and other other street people see this, and if they either feel that they can take it from him, or maybe that he owes me from a previous time, they'll follow him back into a back alley and and beat him and take him for a beer and, and cigarettes. Uh, whereas if he stays on the main drag, there's a much more ch uh, better chance he's going to remain safe. So safety is the first reason they do this. The second reason, and this may be much more obvious to you, but that's where the cash is. That's where they can run their hustles. It's easier to sit on a stoop on the main street or walk up to people where there's this high traffic area where there's more foot traffic and pedestrians and walk up and give their pitch, their hustle for why they need money. I just got out of the hospital and I need a buck and a quarter uh, to get on the bus to get home or uh, whatever their particular scam or hustle could be and there's a variety of very creative and, and cool ones uh, in my experience they are all 100 percent lies the money that, that they get there on the street uh, will go straight into drugs alcohol and tobacco uh, it, I'm not suggesting that you don't help these people the way I like to help them is to give to a very you know hyper local charity that's going to help them. Uh, maybe there's there's a parish in that area, the St. Vincent de Paul Society, something like that. But there are food shel uh, food providers and clothing providers and shelters right there in that neighborhood, you know. And I give to those, and I don't feel bad to say no, I can't help you out uh, because there are these resources for them for food and shelter and safety and those types of things. Uh, so the number two reason they tend to hustle on the main drags, uh, stay on the main drag and drink is because that's where the money is, that's where the people are that they can panhandle for. Now, the real thing, why is this important to you? Why, as an investigator, do you care about whether they hang out in the back alleys or on the main drag? The thing is, I want you to be, you know, to understand why they're on the main drag. You have to get into their head. Your head. You have to see from their perspective. And this is the key and vital skill set for you as an investigator. And this is whether you're doing interviews, serving subpoenas, uh, doing skip tracing. You have to put yourself in the other guy's perspective. And this does not just go for you know street people, and and that I mean on the consider the other arguably far end of the spectrum. 
a, uh, a professional, a doctor or a lawyer. Say a doctor is a really good example. I can think of one case in particular where I had to serve a, an MD and uh, it's one of the rare cases where I called ahead and uh, she was very unpleasant about it on the phone. Eventually agreed. I was very, very nice. Maybe I'll tell a story sometime. But when I went in to serve her, I went in, uh, one of the rare times I'll wear a tie, I do occasionally, but you know, I wore a tie, I went in as a gentleman. Uh, if you had seen me come in, you couldn't tell the difference between me and a patient, and it just was a professional thing. And when she saw me approach and, and uh, bring her papers in this way, it really changed her perspective of what she thought it was gonna be like. She thought it was gonna be embarrassing and obvious and I would be doing this in front of her patients and her workers and you know but I was able to understand her perspective adjust accordingly had a very pleasant serve and she told me oh if you need to serve me again just give a call anytime uh, so the lesson to take away is put yourself in the other guy's shoes it's gonna make you a much better private investigator this is Larry K with shadowanyone.com remember do the right thing even if it's the hard thing